Hello everyone, Adrian from Audio Excellence. Hope you're doing well. Um, Mike on my right and Lewis and Allison is behind the cameras. It's her debut, although she hasn't been on the camera yet, so we'll, we'll get her on the camera soon. Anyway, today we're going to be talking about the Sonus Faber Guarneri G5, the latest version. Um, it's a small stand mount. I used to call speakers that are small bookshelves, but somebody corrected me and said, no, no, you should call them stand mounts because no speaker or virtually none actually sit on bookshelves. So we're going to call them uh, stand mounts. Um, whoever's doing the editing will throw up uh, an array of the different specifications I won't go through and, and uh, bore you to death. Anyway, the speakers are made in Italy. They come in three different finishes, um, Wenge, Red, and a new finish that uh, is going to be coming out soon called Graphite or Graphite. The stands are made with carbon fiber, the, the, the center pillar. Um, my mind just went blank. There's a uh, Pagani. Pagani, who's a very famous, um, very high-end car manufacturer, actually makes the carbon fiber for them. So very, very cool. Really? Yes, very, very cool. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So the guys will take some uh, shots of the speakers and, and include uh, them in this video so you can see uh, how, how luxurious the speakers are. Anyway, um, who wants to start? Oh, before we, sorry, before we get started, I'll, I'll just talk about the system. We made it very simple this time around. We have the D'Agostino Progression Integrated Amplifier, which is rated at 200 watts into 8 ohms, 400 into 4 ohms. It's got um, uh, a DAC built in in our uh, case, so we just had the Ethernet connected directly to it, and we just streamed uh, Tidal and Cobus. So, uh, Lewis, go on. Okay, so... Um this is uh, my review of uh, songs I chose to listen to the system are definitely um, from the 70s. And the first song I chose was, uh, this is uh, from Tom Jones, I Who Have Nothing. A uh, big tune back in the early 70s. Um, remember um, hearing it a lot and playing it a lot as well. Um, the orchestration of you know the 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 song or even the the the, the orchestration yeah the orchestration was is fantastic clean clear coming out of the Ganaries, um it's just no sibilance you know n it's not hot on the top it's just really good violins sound like violins um really good pianos are exceptional um, which is one of the hardest instruments to uh, record um, sounding fantastic um, the center the center image still great a lot of sound staging between the speakers too high low and depth S fantastic um, I moved on to another track by um, Tom Jones too, which was also very popular um, in Jamaica. I don't know why, but it's called, the, the, the title was The Green Green Grass of Home. And part of it, that's the lyric said, um, it's good to touch the green green grass of home. I don't know what that meant in Jamaica about <laughs> that, <laughs> but I'll leave that one alone. <laughs> Come on, Mike. Um, yeah, so when with this... When it's green, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> we will continue. <laughs> um, so, you know, um, this one had really foot-tapping music. Um, the, the depth of the sound stage. Wait, wait, um, wait. Foot-tapping to this very morose song? It's a great song. <laughs> oh no, it's a great song. I'm just saying that. Yeah, no, no, no. Well, you, you know, the lyrics is about a guy who's <laughs> on death row, right? <laughs> it's not exactly a toe tapping song. <laughs> no, no, not well. I mean, the the rhythm is toe tapping. I mean, yeah, there I'm are parts of it which time. is which is which is you know which is great. Um, good dance music too. I mean, slow My waltz. My God, you guys. Yeah, dance yeah music. no kidding. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. The well, most depressing dance floor ever. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I mean. I um, as a Jamaican, um, growing up, we danced a lot. Part, our parties are dance parties. 
That's why we did. No, no, we're, we're, we're not. We're not. So, <laughs> we're, we're not. We're not commenting about the fact that you dance as in, in your <laughs> culture. We're just commenting about the fact that this is a song that you don't use anyway. It's <laughs> funny, anyway. But yeah. So, anyways, um, it just brought back the memories of the early seventies to me. Um, another song I played. Um, it's not a audiophile recording. Was. Um, Engelbert Humperdinck, um, My World, Il Mondo. Um, beautiful song back in the early 60s, mi sorry, mid 60s, when he became famous after his song, Release Me. Um, it was played a lot back in Jamaica, uh, along with the Supremes and all the other big uh, groups uh, back in the 60s there. And um, the the backing band or the orchestration was so good, you know, smooth, um, rhythmic. Um, it the Sonus Faber brought out all the pleasures in that track to me. Just remembering, you know, back in the day how we enjoyed music, and to this day I still enjoy these older songs. But um, yeah. Um, the reproduction is just, you know, really great compared to what I hear now with program beats, uh, which uh, turns me off. Um, another song I played was um, from Shirley Bassey. I don't. It's a cover song. Um, it's 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 um, the song is yesterday when I was young. Um, it's a cover. Um, the the one I heard originally was by Glenn Campbell, and then I was introduced to this one here. And she is really Dame Shirley Bassey. She has such a range, um, a vocal range, and the Ganaries just brought out everything. Nothing, you know, to upset my ears. It was just. The, the it, it was just encapsulating how she brought she expression of this song with her she's very expressive when she sings um beautiful song um what can i say um so you love the music Did i love the music and i love the reproduction of the ganaries okay. I am a big fan of Sonos Faber, of course, not because we sell them, but after hearing a lot of um, other brands, and especially this one, it has no shrill on the top end. It's just good. Great. Mike? What he said. <laughs> <laughs> um, I loved them sometimes. Sometimes I thought they were lacking. So let me say... The imaging was spectacular. The sound stage is spectacular. Mm. They're very detailed, but buttery smooth. Um, the first track I played was by a an American. Uh, I believe she's Puerto Rican and Cuban by descent. Xenia Rubinos, and the song is Black Star. Um, it's a modern song. She's got a beautiful singing voice, so it's got some heavy bass uh, going on in the background, but very beautiful, uh, very beautiful vocal vocals. Um, and these speakers reproduced her vocals so well. Um, the vocals are a little forward in the mix, but it wasn't too forward. They were right where they needed to be. They're front and center, um, but it let the rest of the music just shine. They really, they really perform really well in the top end, the mid range. I, 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 I've been listening to the song for a, a number of years. I'm infatuated with the song. So I've listened to it on a lot of systems. I felt the bass didn't, didn't go very far and I was disappointed in that I really was um, I'm I, I, I've said it before I'm not a bass head 
you know, it's, I, I don't listen to tons of electronic music. I don't listen to hip hop at all. Um, but this music does have some electronic elements and I felt something was missing in, in the low end. And I've said before, the low end is, is, is what hits you. It's what moves the air in the room. Um, so the next track I played, I wasn't going to play it, but after the first track, I decided to play this track because again, I know, uh, I know it quite well. I know how the bass performs in it. So the name of the band is Hiatus Coyote. It's a small little band from uh, Australia, very eclectic music. It's hard to categorize it. Let's call it jazz funk, jazz pop maybe. Um, uh, their studio albums are very overproduced. So uh, the singer, sometimes she doubles her quadrupled vocals already. So there's lots going on. It's a very thick, uh, dense sound. And boy, these speakers just played everything beautifully. All, all the details present in all of her, all of her overdubbed, uh, doubled voices comes through beautifully. Um, uh, the transients in, in the keyboards and the drums comes through. The bass, you can hear the little bit of bite in the bass and it comes through. But again, the, the very low end I thought was lacking. And they're small speakers. It's only a, a seven inch woofer, mm. is that what it is? No, it's smaller than that. Six, 5.9 or something like that. So I understand it. I understand and maybe the room was a little bit too, too big for them. Um, so again, I changed my selection based on what I was hearing. And the next one was uh, a song called Zombie by an artist from uh, Nigeria called Felakuti, maybe considered the father of Afrobeat. Um, and I, I don't know if you've ever listened to, to Felakuti before, but his songs are anywhere between 13 to 20 minutes and the first bar you hear at the beginning of the song, that's it. That's that's what the whole song sounds like, just with a uh, different saxophone and, 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 and vocals going on. But the bass that you hear thumping in the first bar, that's what continues on. And again, I've been listening to this song since I was in film school. So 25 years ago, I first heard this song. I've heard it on a million different systems. And again, I think thought the bass was was lacking there is a plumpness to this bass this this is this is an analog recording from the early 1970s in in Nigeria it's got a really big plump fat bass and it just wasn't coming through so my thoughts would be for this to be a perfect system, I would need to hear it with a subwoofer. Because without a subwoofer, I just was not feeling it. Everything else about them was was more than perfect. They have that beautiful uh, Sonus Faber sound, which just puts this absolutely gorgeous sheen over everything. It's just got this magical, this magical presence. Um, and of course, these being the, I'm going to say Gennady instead of Gennady. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be putting my Italian into it, Gennady. Mm -hmm. So these Gennady speakers do that to the nth degree, with the exception of the bass. So other than the low-end extension, they were absolutely spectacular. They really are. They, they, they're just so... They're so sugary, buttery, smooth. It's it's something to behold. Because before this, we had the um, what do we have in here? The Alex Alexi the Alexia Five and the um, the Sasha DW right, which are <laughs> bass. <laughs> yeah, I mean these are you could fit seven or eight of these units inside those cabinets. Um, so we're talking about uh, oranges and and really big apples, um, but the, I'm talking about the, the top end and how both of those companies uh, deal with their top ends and their mid-range. And the, the Wilson sometimes, uh, maybe clinical is, is a, not a very nice word, but clinical in a, in a very good way. 
and the saunas fibers are just like buttery, buttery smooth. They put this gorgeous buttery smoothness over everything, except for the low end. That's it. So I'm going to play devil's advocate. <clears throat> the the Guaneri speakers, I don't think were ever meant from generation one for every purpose, every genre, every application. So while I think, not think, I, I do know that your I love your response, I, uh, as honest as it is. Um, I think you may be overly harsh on um, the fact that they don't do the bass um, because they're not meant to. Um, because if they were, then they would be the Serafinos, mm -hmm. or they would be the uh, the the uh, Guaneri, uh, sorry, the uh, Amadi, Amadi, or the upcoming um, Stradivari. Um, mm -hmm. So, what are your thoughts with uh, with regards to that? Either they would need, to, either I would need to sit closer, or the room would have to be smaller. I'm just very familiar with these tracks, and I know. No, I understood. I know, but what I'm I, saying is that I know what I've, I've, I know what I'm hearing in the past. And I, I, I honestly, um, the problem. I think the problem is when you hear the Wilsons in here in this room, mm -hmm. and they're vibrating the ceiling tiles. It's, it's, it's not that. You, I didn't really miss the bass. It's just that it's not there um, compared to those, mm -hmm. but it's there. Um, the person buying these speakers would not be putting them in this size room, let's face it. I would hope not, yeah. So um, let's say a condo or a small room, these would be perfect. And you may not miss the bass. You may not be missing the bass. So, you know, there's a caveat. Mm -hmm. um, who would be buying this speaker? It's it's a fantastic speaker, but it's not going to be meant for a room this size. I think, okay, all things being equal, I think if your tastes tend towards the more organic, if you're listening to, to older jazz, if you're listening to classical, these are going to be fantastic. So after these tracks, I put on a few Oscar Peterson tracks. He's got... He's got a series from maybe the late 70s or early 80s called Exclusively for My Friends, where it's a uh, he literally plays, in, I believe, in his house in Mississauga, maybe. Mm -hmm. And uh, he plays whatever he wants to play. And some of it is just, it's Oscar Peterson, so it's blazingly fast piano, up and down the, the keyboard. Um, it's a these are really dense songs and these speakers handled them perfectly the transients are just perfect so i understand that playing so music with electronic elements in this room specifically i i was missing something i was missing but i i i, I get where you guys are coming from i understand yeah that. and by the way this is not uh criticism it's it's just being aware that uh, you know the British have a saying called "horses for courses." So you, you, one of our jobs in in sales <coughs> is to advise and to recommend the right system, the right products for the um, for for the uh, um, the client that's looking for whatever it is. So, um, well, I I. Let, let me um, let me talk about my, my my thinking first, and then we'll we'll wrap up with the thoughts. Um, I've always had well stand mount speakers, uh, bookshelves, <laughs> have always had a special place in my heart. My very first high end speaker, when I say high end, I mean really good speaker, was a pair of uh, LS three five A's, the original Rogers, and that speaker came as a result of my being extremely unhappy with the Bose 901s, mm -hmm. which at the time, back in the mid-80s, were considered to be, by most mainstream audio magazines, to be the speaker you should buy. Stereo Review, High Fidelity, they all said, you know, audio magazine, they all said this was the speaker. This was uh, perfect. This was Amar Bose's 
best efforts and you should buy them if you could afford them. I eventually saved enough money, bought them, never hurt them, took them home, and I was so disappointed. I thought they had, I mean, where were all the bass? Where was, you know, the speakers are perfect, but there's no bass. There's no high frequencies. There's no, everything sounded very muffled and all mid range. I thought the speakers were broken. When it went back to the dealer, the dealer said, no, the speakers are perfectly fine. And I kept thinking, it can't be. How is it possible that everybody thinks, you know, the experts think these speakers are great and I think these are broken? Um, and and with some sense of a reference because I grew up playing music. So I, I know what music sounds like. I know what instruments sound like. This doesn't sound like the instruments. So one day I'm walking uh, to to this dealer I found on Yellow Pages. For those of you old enough to know what a Yellow Pages <laughs> is, funny uh, sidebar. Somebody called us from Yellow Pages asking yeah, if we right. wanted to advertise, and my response was, "You guys are still around." <laughs> 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 anyway, um, went to this store called Ring Audio, and I told them how sad I was. And the guy goes, "Come into this room." And he had a tiny little room, had this little odd-looking integrated amplifier with a turntable and of course by then it was all CDs everybody knew CDs were better so he's playing this turntable on these tiny little speakers I sat down and I was transfixed within seconds I thought my god these speakers are incredible I knew nothing about that level of audio turns out they were the LS 35 as with a little tiny musical fidelity A1 20 watt integrated amplifier uh, class A and a Rega, the original Rega 3. I immediately saved money to buy those speakers and that started my uh, love affair with um, bookshelf speakers and over the years I've owned all sorts of bookshelf speakers, TC, Spica TC50s, ATCs, um, Harbors, um, the, the original Wilson Watt 1s, um, and on and on and on. I heard the original Guarneri uh, uh, back in the early 90s, 92 I want to say. My client had just come back from Hong Kong and he brought a pair back with him and he said, Adrian, you got to hear these speakers. Now I knew also in this Faber, never seen them really. Now that's not true, I had seen them but not the Guarneri. And within seconds of listening to it, I was in love. As uh, Mike and, and Lewis pointed out, they have this beautiful, buttery, smooth sound. They made everything, especially vocals and violins, more beautiful than the recording itself. I would play Von Karajan, I would play Yasha Heifetz, I would play uh, um, on and on, it, it wouldn't matter. Even bad recordings sounded beautiful. Um, that was a speaker that served the music in that sense. It wasn't accurate, it wasn't neutral, but if you were a music lover, it was a speaker that you would fall in love with. And successively, over every iteration, I've owned a pair and I've always loved them for what they do. Now comes where I agree with Mike. No, they're not perfect. They are definitely missing the low and mid bass. They're not meant to be full range speakers. They can't play very loud, so if you love Metallica, no, it's not the speaker for you. Regardless of how small your room is, it's just not the right speaker. If if your, if your main music is um, reggae, it's not the right speaker for you. So you, so you have to choose uh, based on, on the speaker, choose the speakers based on your taste. Here's a tiny little speaker that sells for 19,000 US dollars. How do you rationalize that? I mean, in the store, we recently talked about the uh, Martin Logan Motion XTF 200s. There are 7,000 Canadian. It's literally one third the price of these Guarneri G5s. One third, and that speaker is full range. It 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 goes all the way down, goes all the way up. It does all kinds of things beautifully. Looks fine, well made. We have the Mofi Source Point Tens. They go pretty low down. They're roughly five thousand dollars Canadian with stands, less than five roughly. They are uh, almost one fifth the price, right? How do you justify these tiny little speakers at twenty and nineteen thousand U.S. dollars? Let me, let me, in my mind, explain the way that I rationalize it. 
the speakers remind me of an actress called Audrey Hepburn, right? So those of you old enough, uh, she's she's looking at me and going, who is this guy talking about? <laughs> uh, those of you old enough will, will know who I'm talking about. Um, Audrey Hepburn was my mom's favorite actress. She was the embodiment of class, of sensuality, not sexuality, sensuality, of elegance, of... Um, a demure seduction, if I can call it that. Mm. When I think of the Guaneri, I and then for those of you who have no idea who I'm talking about, think of cars, and maybe this will make more sense. I remember when Mini decided to uh, reintroduce the Mini Cooper. So back about 20, 25 years ago, the Mini Cooper thing came out. I immediately went and ordered one. When it came, I was all excited because I had the original Mini Cooper. And as fun as that was, it was in many ways not that great, not not a very primitive car. So the, the new Mini Cooper was a lot of fun, but it lacked power. But it was a lot of fun. It lacked power, but it was a lot of fun, right? And then the dealer said to me, oh, well, if you love this, wait till the Cooper S, I immediately said, get me one. I I didn't even finish the sentence, get me one. So sure enough, the S comes. I'm one of the first in Canada to get it. Oh my God, I would zip all over town in that tiny little car. This was back when the Mini Coopers were still tiny, not like the new ones today. You could park it anywhere. You could take a corner. Uh, uh, on regular streets, you know, even though it didn't wasn't going very fast, it felt like it was going fast. Um, it was a ton of fun for those applications. No, I mean on the highway, all kinds of cars would pass me right by because it wasn't all that powerful. Um, <clears throat> it was tiny inside, much tinier than the original Mini Cooper, in the sense of space uh, util- uh, utilization. But for what it was, it blew me away. Much like my Dino 1973. Um, for those of you, again, into cars, Google it, you'll, you'll see. It was my pride and joy for many, many, many years. Um, it wasn't a car I took out very often, but when I did, oh my God. It was, I remember the first time I picked it up from the dealer. Finally paid him off, drove that car. I'm going to say something politically incorrect. It was like a continuous orgasm all the way home for, for, for about 45 minutes, I was having the time of my life. The, the chain-driven engine was loud, was aggressive. The, the carburetors were going nuts and popping. And, oh, it was fun. Um, could you drive it every day? No, absolutely not. Um, but when you could and when you did, it was one of the best times in my motoring uh, history. In much the same way, the Guaneri does that for me. When I play music that I care about these days, um, uh, it brings unbridled joy to my heart. Um, Absolutely true. Uh, Mike was absolutely right. I can't play certain pieces of showcase music that we might play for our clients that come in. Uh, You know, uh, um, uh, Lewis's favorite. uh, uh, Cashmere. uh, Yeah, you know, uh, no, that's that speaker. That 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 piece of music would damage the speakers, Um, right? Um, But for less taxing, less overproduced bass heavy recordings you get us you get enough at least for me a sense of bass that I don't really miss it all that much you know I, I use this example of the desert island situation if I were if I were if I knew I was going to be going to a desert island with power <laughs> and I could have a certain amount of music with me but that's all I could have would I ever bring Kashmir? No, not in a million years. I have no interest whatsoever in playing that piece of music ever again. It's a great demo album. It's a great demo album because you can showcase how good your system can can be <coughs> uh, uh, in terms of dynamics and deep bass. But for musical enjoyment, absolutely not. Not interested whatsoever. Um, for the music I care about, <coughs> a lot of the early folk music, um, a lot of the classical pieces of music, and I played a lot of them through these speakers, um, they consistently brought me joy, uh, uh, beauty, satisfaction. 
Uh, now, I don't know the music that Mike played, so I have no idea, and, and, and I don't even know whether or not I would care about that music. Ultimately, that's the key. You will have to decide, based on the music you like, whether they are right for you. And in that point, I totally agree with Mike. They're not, for, they're not right for everybody. Um, I, I will just give you a couple of examples of, of music. Um, Fix It by Lady Blackbird. Um, it's a beautiful recording. If you listen to the piano, uh, the, the right hand <coughs> is somewhat distant. Quite interesting. I don't really know how they mic'd it. It almost sound like, sounded like they used two mics for the piano. The right hand of the piano sounds very distant and further back to the right. But the left hand is much closer and more intimate. Um, the double bass is right up front. Very punchy, very clear, very articulate, um, very noticeable, very snappy. Um, and, and her voice, Nina Simone. The moment I heard her years ago, I thought, yeah. Nina Simone. She's got this beautiful, seductive, ethereal voice that just draws you in. Um, and then as far as bass is concerned, I played Howler by Martin Gore. Uh, again, guys, check it out, see what you think. Um, it doesn't go very low, for sure. It doesn't shake the floor, it doesn't thump you in the chest, but what it does have was satisfying enough for me. Um, and, and in fact, I played it so loud, I was trying to see if I could actually, yeah, in a moment of craziness, see if I could actually get the speakers to, to, to distort. I played it so loud that the amplifier, the D'Agostino have meters in the front, and the meters were pegging, yeah, yeah right at the end. I mean, that's wow. how loud I was playing, and I was still playing it, and I was still enjoying it. And here's the other thing. When you play a recording that has sufficient bass, and it's it's taxing a two-way speaker. Oftentimes, you will start losing detail, and you get start start getting smearing. Um, not with these. Uh, I, I I still heard how beautiful the recording was, how smooth the voice was. I just enjoyed it uh, tremendously. Finally, let me just conclude. I started off by saying that these speakers remind me of Audrey Hepburn. So, for those of you who know, uh, she was in a movie called Breakfast at Tiffany's, right? And uh, not all that long ago, it came on the TV again, and so I was watching it, and it reminded me of how good the, the, the movie was, or at least, you know, it's been years since I watched it, so I watched it again. And I won't spoil it. If you haven't seen it, you should watch it. But there's a section where she sings, she sings a song called Moon River. Now, uh, lots and lots and lots of people have covered this beautiful song, and and many are far better recorded. If you can find this find this recording on Tidal or Kobas, you'll hear it. It's not a good recording. It almost sounds mono. It's not, but it almost sounds and very muffled. No real high frequencies. Almost as if, if you remember in the early days, uh, early days, you know, 30, 40 years ago, you get a, a microphone from Radio Shack, put it through a mixer, and put it through your favorite cassette re, uh, cassette deck, and you would record yourself. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> Top end was rolled off. Almost sound like Bose. <laughs> 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 Full circle, and it sounded like that to me. But, and she's not a professional singer. But the way that she interpreted the song, for me, was by far the most uh, compelling of all the interpretations I've heard. I mean, Andy Williams sings this beautiful song. Um, so many people have. And yet, this one makes me tear up. When you listen to the words, she's longing for a better life You know, in the movie. She, she's hoping to find somebody rich enough to support her for all her vices and all her dreams and, and wanting to be a special VIP at Tiffany. And, you know, uh, when she sings this song, the words speak to my heart. So that is what the Guaneri does for me. And this G5 is the best of all the versions I've heard. And I'll conclude by saying this. Um, the speakers, like Audrey Hepburn, remind me of the woman that you meet and you want to marry. Not a person that you want to have a fling with, but somebody you want to take home and say, Mom and Dad, she's the one. I want to spend the rest of my life with her. And what I mean by that is that if I had to have a short list, God forbid, thank God I don't, but if I had to have a short list of speakers that I would have to live with for the rest of my life, 
this would be on a very, very, very small short list. That's what uh, they mean to me. Okay, <coughs> let's go around the, cor- uh, uh, the horn and, and, and hear your thoughts and conclusions and push back against me if necessary. If you no, I, 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 I'm, I'm in 100% agreement. I could live with these in my house, no problem, because my room is nowhere near this size. And um, even though I have stand mounts, um, I have the um, Dynaudio Special 40, but I have a JL sub with it. Um, this has more bass than the, um, the Special 40. Um, dine and I could easily live with this because I'm in a small room. If I went to a bigger room, I'd have a, the Gravis sub. You just liked them because I said Audrey Hepburn. <laughs> <laughs> she was one. Of, she was uh, one of the best actresses in her time. Yeah. So as Catherine Hepburn too. Yes. <laughs> so. um, I I I love them. Even though I say they they lack base, I love them. And Lewis is right. Um, I would take them in a second. My room is not as big as this. I I would love to have a, a small little setup with these guys. Um, I still think in a small, I would have to hear it. I still think in a small room, I think I would still have a sub. That sub might be barely audible, but I think I would still have a sub to fill out that bottom end. Yeah. Just be very careful to make sure they match. Yeah, yeah. but other than that, they are... <clears throat> gorgeous sounding speakers and can we say how beautiful they look oh, physically yeah. they are gorgeous well that's why to me they're Audrey Hepburn oh, <laughs> look at them like they're beautiful yeah yeah so you know the, the amazing thing is how how the different finishes we haven't got the graphite yet so I'm, I'm excited to wait to, to, to get them but is in, the graphite a, a still a wood it's just it's, a, yeah okay. it's, it's, it's finished in this Black, it's beautiful blackish gray blackish dark gray, gray yeah. dark gray <clears throat> with <clears throat> apparently some some almost specks in there um, so uh, when we get them I, I ordered the Stradivari with the, with the graphite oh, finish okay. oh, so yeah. they'll come in September October whenever they start shipping well, I'll put in some insert shots so you can get, get yeah. see some close ups of yeah. these guys it truly is a stunning yeah. speaker I, I, I love them very much I mean this this is the, I mean uh, the other names what um Adrian mentioned about the Martin Logan speakers. <clears throat> Let's face it, they don't have the finish what this has. They just don't. I mean, there's nothing in the store has a better finish than Sonos Faber. You're, Let's yeah. face facts. I mean, that's true. I mean, this is more a wife acceptance factor than anything else inside here. I'd have to agree. Because yesterday when <clears throat> that uh, specific client came in and he saw these, he was just touching them. He says, so I said, um, you, you know, in your price range, what you're looking at, um, look at this other one. He says, no, no, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> Sonus Faber. Well, the other interesting thing that you brought up uh, about the other speakers we sell. So I mentioned earlier very briefly that we have, for example, the Martin Logans, right? Floor standing speakers for $7,000. They're an absolute steal. Absolutely phenomenal speakers. Same with the MoFi. But what's fascinating is that when I listen to them, I don't fall in love. I, I have I have an emotional and intellectual admiration for them. And maybe it's just the fact that I can afford more. And so, you know, but... Um, if I were being extremely honest with myself, that's not it. They they do everything really well. They don't do anything beautifully, and and I think for me that's that's what the X factor. I guess some people call it. You can't quantify that. If you just looked at measurements, yeah. they probably look terrible. Um, if you look at value for money based on frequency response, they look terrible. Yeah. Right. And yet, you play the music through them and you go, how is that possible? How is it possible that something that we cannot quantify, we cannot put numbers to it, can stir the emotions of your heart? Um, and, 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 and yet it does. It does so beautifully. Same with the Serafino. But in some ways, I prefer these simply because they're uncomplicated. They're a simple two-way for me. Um, uh, and and as, as I... I I love what these do. Yeah, best way to put it. Any other last words, guys? <coughs> no? It's <No>. a buy. <laughs> <laughs> I would. 
yeah. yeah. No, definitely, definitely. All right, guys. Yeah. Well, thanks for watching this long preamble and so on. Um, we'd love to hear your comments. Uh, put them in the uh, comment boxes. And um, if you've heard them, uh, let us know what you think. If you haven't heard them, um, go check them out. I think you would, well, after you check them out, let us know. I'm always interested in, in your comments. And of course, uh, subscribe, turn on notifications, mm -hmm. share the videos. Um, we, we uh, just a quick reminder, the, the funds that we receive from YouTube, we match it and we donate to charities. It's our way of giving back. And the fact that you watch us and you support this channel allows us to do the, the good deeds. So thanks again. We'll see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>